go get him again. What's going on, fragrance family? Welcome to another episode of Sampling Samples Sundays. We are sampling every Sunday. This series is where I wear a scent as much as the little sample lets me. Not all samples are made alike. And it is my scent of the day today, and I'm gonna give you as much detail as I can, give you my final thoughts if I'm gonna be buying a bottle of this stuff, or I'm gonna get another sample just because of various reasons, or simply it's the end of the road for the scent. Sampling samples actually the one series that I absolutely love because you never know what the outcome will be. Today's sample is from, of course, Lucky Scent. You know, I did this bulk Lucky Scent sample purchase, and now you guys are seeing the fruits of that. And I'll be testing Interlude Black Iris by Amouage. Look at this, Amouage in the flanker game. Since when? Um, I own and love the original Interlude. This is the only inter Interlude bottle I own as of today's date. Um, I own, of course, the non-magnetic cap. I bought this at around launch. Um, Interlude, not my favorite Amouage, but top five, I would say. Uh, Blue Beast, yeah, of course. I actually have to do a full-fledged review on that one. Yeah. Now, I'm highly interested in this flanker now that they've flankered up Interlude twice. Not once, twice they got Black Iris, the one I'm gonna be testing today, and of course, Interlude 53. So I got, I think in that sample pack, I got Interlude 53 too. So you're gonna see sampling samples on that one too. Um, interesting to say the least that, you know, Chong's gone and now Amouage is flankering up a fragrance out, not just once, but twice. <laughs> Crazy. Um, but that's the direction of this uh, new creative direction. We'll see how this goes. Let's see what they did with Interlude with, of course, Interlude Black Iris. Let's go under the hood first. Let's take a look at some stats on this one. Release date was 2020. Concentrations Eau de Parfum. Nose, they brought back Monsieur Pierre Negrin. All-Star Parfumier, great nose. If someone can flank her up interlude, it is this guy. Major notes to this nose, orris root, of course. Black iris, you gotta have some iris in this fragrance, of course. Frankincense, the incense, yes. And leather. I wanna apologize early, this video is gonna run long. Any amouage, doesn't care if it's an unboxing, sampling samples, test drive, full-fledged review, they're gonna run long. Um, I just love dissecting the brand of amouage. So um, this little Lucky Scent sample of mine is almost bone dry. Let's uh, remind me of this introduction. Okay, let's drain it and uh, see where this brings me. So, oh, hmm. Man, interlude black iris. They did it justice. Um, off the top, the scent is absolutely stunning. Um, you sense the original interlude beast lingering, but it's paired with a waxy, buttery iris note that just tames the whole compass. It just brings the original beast down. Um, you are received with that smoky incense, but also paired with the vanilla quality. So that brightens up things a, a little bit here. That vanilla quality is going to amp up much more into the dry down. This has a lot of vanilla, surprisingly, maybe. Um, I, I felt there was a lot of it and it's gonna amplify quite a bit into the heart. Now the oregano note, oh, missing from the note breakdown. Yes, however, um, it is an interesting note in the original interlude and it's still personally still doing its thing here. Even though not listed, very much toned down, um, I felt that herbal, that greenness, um, rosemary's in this. So you do have some herbal green qualities here in the opening with that oregano. Violet leaf is in this release. Violet leaf is a key to the opening as well because it gives this an ozonic mineral-like quality to my nose, which again opens the gates, tames the beast a little bit. So now you got some more playful notes to play with, of course, the original interlude DNA. So this thing, thick, um, dry, huge, big, bold, all this. Now they're bringing in some notes to, what can I say, like almost ease it into, um, tames it down, makes it uh, more crowd pleasing. Yes, um, I would not be surprised if Black Iris introduces people to the brand of Amouage or they disliked a lot of Amouage fragrances, too bold, too different, too too weird, and people gravitated towards this one. 
vanilla qualities, violet leaf, iris will all do those things. And that's what they do in this release. Now going back to the opening, it's still punching. It's still big and bold, yet tame. Um, more wearable interlude, yes. Well composed though. Introduction's awesome. Now let's get into the heart of this release to the deep dry down and you have that familiar base, but tamed. All of Adam's there, myrrh, labdanum. They give interlude black iris, that smoke, resins, balsamic qualities, they're all there. Leather and iris, they always seem to be together in fragrances. They're always attached to the hip and they are a big part of this fragrance, especially going into the heart of this one. I felt like those two notes played well together and were, they're not central, but they are definitely a big part, a big role in this heart. The iris plays a supportive role in this sense. So it's not a up front and center note, I felt was more of a supportive role that it, it just, it's almost like this was, you know, there, there was like certain areas and then they just kind of put like a new, a new flavor in it. And that's pretty much it. Um, the iris plays that supportive role. It never took the full spotlight. It gave the familiar interlude DNA smoothness um, and creaminess. Um, you never felt that the iris in this one was too powdery. Um, I didn't feel like it was makeup. It does give you that creaminess, the waxiness. It does that, it smooths it out. Um, you get more of the woods here in the back end. Uh, towards the end of this scent, you got uh, cedar, definitely, and you get some sandal. Now I wanna go back to the vanilla. The vanilla itself um, amps up so much in the dry down. It gives a really dark smoky scent of vanillic sweetness. That is a strong secondary note. I love it. it. It really works well with the rest of the composition. There's a bit of patchouli back here. There's some oud. Um, those two notes are more structure bases than strong notes. At the end of the day, you get interlude but with cleaner notes like iris, violet leaves, some added depth to it with more leather and vanillic qualities, but still remains a dark scent, but it has a smoothness to it. Um, I really enjoyed this one. Redundant release, um, it's up to the nose. Um, I could see this as someone having interlude and going, you know what, I really like interlude. I'm not gonna spend the money to get Black Iris, but I could see the other side of the coin where someone's like, I did not like Interlude, but I really like Black Iris. Um, so I could see those type of, and then there's a guy like me that's like, I love Interlude, I now want this. <laughs> but I'm a different breed altogether. Let's get into uh, Seasons, Day Night Versatility, and of course, Performance. Uh, seasons, Fall, uh, Winter, and you know what's great about this one? I think this can, prolong your interlude wearings with spring nights. Um, I really think the added vanillic tendencies, violet, um, even the iris, uh, really works well in the spring weather. You know, uh, and again, in Canada, it's different in other countries, but in Canada, you know, you, you got some, some snow that's melting, um, you're gonna get some rain. Those kind of days, perfect. Uh, day or night, I feel like this is more of a nighttime scent. Versatility, fairly average. I don't think this one's so bold. Um, and again, you gotta be mindful of when you're gonna wear this, but fairly average to me. Performance. Uh, performance was good. Nine to 12 plus hours as far as longevity goes. Really good, can't complain there. And with above average projection. I wouldn't go beast mode. Um, you know, interlude gets that beast mode tag. I don't think this one does. Um, very much higher end, higher echelon. Lots of longevity. You're gonna get your money's worth. When you put this on, you can't go, uh-oh. I'm gonna wear something else in two hours. No, you spray it, you go, uh oh, I'm stuck with this for half the day at least. So at the end of the day, Interlude Black Iris is a smoother, dare I say more refined interlude. It gives me much of the original, but kind of classes it up a little bit. And a little bit, kind of. Lighter, smoother version of Interlude Man, if I can say that. And again, I don't want this to be an Interlude versus Interlude Man Black Iris, but I'm really pleased that they brought back Negre. Uh, with this release as the nose. And if you needed to make an Amouage flanker, which honestly is not needed. This brand does not need to do this. Um, they picked the right scent, they picked the right nose, and they did the right thing. Personally, Black Iris is exactly what I, I expected. When I saw the note breakdown, I saw the nose attached to it. 
Um, I saw the other doing a flanker. I, I scratched my, my, my head a little bit. I was like, mm, what are you guys doing? Uh, you know what? The other little part of me was like excited. I was like, what are they doing? Let's, let's see what they're gonna do. So block iris is exactly what I expected. And honestly, when toning down a scent, you'd think you would lose performance and maybe you did a little bit here. Yeah, you, you did, but it still outperforms 90% of the industry. So performance can't be a knock on it. Um, it outperforms so much that it's it's still great. Uh, the complexity is still there for true fraghead, but brings it down a notch for others that may not like Amouage as a brand um, or didn't like the original interlude. I could see that appealing to others. It definitely introduced a few more people to the brand. I, personally, I think that. Um, and like I said earlier, this release can extend my interlude wearings as I can see wearing this at the end of winter, start of spring, as it's smoother while the Big Brother interlude can be used during the fall and winter months, right in the peak Canadian winter months. At the end of the day, it's not the release we asked for, but it is a release that we appreciate. Personally, I think creative direction, as far as what they did here, they could have really screwed this up. They really could have. Um, performance wise, they could have S, you know, they could have S the bed. Yeah, performance wise, and this wouldn't have done well. They don't bring back Negrin to be the nose. That could have, could have been an issue. Um, they just, they introduced Iris in a way that they didn't move too many parts. And I think they did well. And that's where I appreciate it as a frag head. So this is a definite bottle worthy for me. Interlude's gonna get a friend <laughs> in the collection. If I had to give it a score, and I always do with these sampling samples, and uh, I'm always one that I'm a stickler with perfect scores. I'm, I just, I, I, I like giving them out when they are worthy. And this could be one of those, there could be some Amouage uh, fanboys that'll be like, no, no, you're not gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Um, this is gonna get a perfect 10 out of 10 bottles. This is bottle worthy. It's an excellent release. Um, everything about it, um, they did it well. So now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. I know that uh, a fragrance like this, uh, a brand like this is gonna have some polarizing comments, so I can't wait to sift through. Um, there's gonna be different people at the different side of the coin, and that's okay. Um, but, you know, I think it's an excellent release, and I can't wait to actually sniff my little sample of Interlude 53 and see what they did with that. As always, a great pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube.